Hey everyone, good morning and hey, happy holidays. Can y'all believe that um, yesterday was our two week countdown to Christmas? So, um, you know, who is, uh, who's ready and who's not? Show of hands, who's ready? I'm ready. Good deal, yes. Us, us folks that have to um, make everything happen all at one time, um, make sure we put it into our goal setting schedule. So um, hence today is all about goal setting. You know, what is it about to, to set a goal, you know, and it's not only just business goals, it's personal goals as well. So, um, you know, our, our lives are all about just accomplishing everyday tasks as well as business and um, and then being able to balance that with your family and, and uh, friends and, you know, that sort of thing. So how does that all work? How's that come together? So, um, so anyway, I do want to in, um, introduce Tiffany. Of course, everybody knows Tiffany. She's our general broker manager of Remax Executive, has a huge, huge job, but she has popped on um, in place of hottie this morning that's feeling a little under the weather. So Tiffany, if you want to head it off, you can do your speech and then head on out. I know you probably have a million things to do. Thank you so much, Sherry. I appreciate you hosting this year's goal setting and business planning workshop for our agents. It makes a huge difference when you go into a new year with goals and that you have something that is measurable and that you can focus on and you know if you're meeting them, if you set them. Going right. into a new year without having goals, with not having an idea of what you want to do, never lends itself in growing yourself and growing your business. And so I appreciate you taking the time this morning to interview both Brooke Sines and Michael Brown. They both have incredible journeys and ways to set goals and to plan and really looking forward to hearing what they have to say. So I just wanted to say thank you and Hadi hates that he cannot be here. And we appreciate you all for taking the time to learn today. And also just a special shout out to Brooke and Brooke, Mike. Thank you. thank you. Yes, absolutely. Well, I wanted to kind of kick this off with just um, everybody kind of, you know, I guess everybody understands and knows where the little chat is. If you can just um, think about one word um, that makes you feel like the definition of success for you personally is just one word, you know, is it family? your husband, your job, your dog, your whatever, you know, um, what makes you feel individually feel successful? And I will tell you, um, my word would be um, Jada, Jada Burris, my granddaughter. She, when I see her, I feel successful. I feel like I have been the, the other mother that I'm supposed to be. Of course, you know, a lot of people that um, if you guys don't know me personally, um, I've never birthed babies by choice. Okay. Uh, married my husband and he had two sons. They were eight and 10 when we came onto the picture and now they are 35 and 37. So I consider myself the other mother and, uh, and she does too. Okay. The, the ex-wife and I are, you know, uh, pretty tight as ticks. It's kind of crazy. My husband doesn't get it, but whatever, you know, uh, you know, it takes a village sometimes, you know, to have a great family. And, um, and so Jada, when I look at Jada, I feel successful. I feel like that I've done what I was supposed to do in gearing Joseph to being a husband, being a great husband and being a great father and, you know, putting his, his mark on, on the society with her. So, <laughs> That would be my word. Peace of mind. Got it. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Any other ones in there for right now? Let's see in the chat. Um, uh, peace. That's that's a great one, guys. Art. Oh, so Haley, you, you like to do art, huh? Your art makes you feel good. Awesome. You'll have to share some of that sometime. Um, giving. That's a great one, Tiffany. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of giving this year, you know, this is the time of year that that definitely giving comes to the top of the mind because we are so fortunate um, to be able to do what we do and um, to be successful and and uh, and giving is important. Um, I try and put something positive in the world every week, whether it be that I give to my church online, I give at the grocery store, I do something um to help somebody else um 
family yes smiles yes um travel oh yeah who wants to <laughs> we're all about let's go somewhere huh all this hard work we need to go and have fun yoga definitely you know it helps you to feel successful if you can make those planks because let me tell you something i can't do those planks you know i have tried and tried and it just you know I don't know. I have very weak arms, I guess. I got to work out some more. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I would like to um, just wrap up and say that as about for myself is um, who is Sherry Burris? Well, Sherry Burris uh, joined real estate at 40. OK, so, yes, you can be successful and start a new career at the age of 40. You know, I did it. Also, my aunt Paula Dean did it. You know, Paula Dean is my aunt. She started her business and started the whole Paula Dean franchise, whatever, at 40. And um, and so, you know, 40 is not the end all be all for all you guys that are under that age. Um, it is, all, you know, really also a time that you kind of get a whole nother self-confidence. And then when you hit 50, you even feel even more confident in life and in love and in family and and that sort of thing so all you people dreading hitting the big 5-0 it's really a blast so don't fret it um but yeah i joined i joined real estate when i was 40 um i joined real estate because of you know my back up against the wall i had to change my whole history my whole my whole work um ethics and everything i was regional vice president for the cato corporation um, my husband got hurt at work. He was he was disabled, so I had to pull myself off the off the road. I couldn't travel anymore. So you know, what do you do? Well, I started praying a lot, and sure enough, one day God said, "Girl, sell real estate." And not that I hadn't heard that before from all my friends. Oh, you should sell real estate. You'll be great at it. Da da da. I was like, Oh no, no no no. I don't want to be commission only. No. No, that freaks me out. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I mean, I have to know I've got a check in the mail or checks in my in my in my inbox at the bank. I mean, I've got to know these things. So, um, so coming into real estate was was definitely getting out of my comfort zone. But of course, the good Lord knew well way more better than I did of what I should be doing. And uh, and thank God He shook me up and made me made me come this way because things have never been better. So, um, so anyway, it's, uh, it's a lot too about listening to that, that voice in, in the back of your mind, in your head, you know, listen to your voices, people, because th these voices in your head can help you become successful as well. So um, enough about me, I'd like to introduce Brooke Signs. Brooke, tell us all about you, girl. I hear, so obviously you must be from Michigan somehow, since Haley, Haley asked about that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so yes. good morning, everybody. I originally started my my business in the Grand Rapids, Michigan or West Michigan area and fell in love with real estate as far as the life that it affords me and, and my family, of course. And then had always had, I originally had moved to Charlotte in 2003 and fell in love with the area and then uh, met my husband back in Michigan. So moved back kicking and screaming, but eventually got him to agree to make the move back to the Carolinas. And so I was able to duplicate and start my team here. So I do still run a team in the West Michigan area and started the one here in Charlotte. So um, yeah, it's fun running a team, fun over 800 yeah. miles away. Wow. <laughs> it's a new experience. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, there is quite a few agents in our organization that does that. And, um, you know, and so really, I should make sure you get connected with those with two of those out of my office that also do that as well. So awesome. Thank you for your introduction. And Michael, no further ado, my friend, go ahead and tell us all about you, big boy. Let's do yeah. it. Well, I don't know if we got time to tell you all about, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'll have to get a okay. start. So um, I started my career in corporate America. Um, I was with a company you may have heard of the Bell South now it's AT and T. Uh, back when there was something called a, a Yellow Pages, a phone book. If you remember right. that, so mm -hmm. I was a Yellow Page jockey for years, uh, sales and then management. Uh, some great experience there, great um, leadership experience and training, and they have actually sent me back to school to work on my master's and to to get my master's. Uh, I really enjoyed my time there, and it introduced me 
to real estate uh, as an investor. So a good friend of mine uh, is played football at Clemson down in the Anderson area where he's from. He and his brother were builders. And uh, so I, on behalf of a corporate job, was able to go to the bank and get the money. They would do the work. We split the profits and uh, we had some fun until the lovely crash of 2008. And uh, we had some more fun uh, digging out of that. So uh, I've been full time in real estate uh, since 2012. Uh, I was in management for a good while, built an office from 90 agents to 260 in about 18 months. Um, and then ran a uh, was VP of business development for the largest uh, real estate company in the upstate of South Carolina. We had 475 agents, 10 offices. Uh, and five years ago, my wife and I uh, made it a, a decision to go into production. And uh, so we have a married couple team here in the upstate, and we are actually part of the Remax family. And uh, so, uh, as well as production, uh, I am a business coach uh, with I Love Coaching. That's where I met several of the people that are on the call, Haley. Um, and that is why I think they asked me to be on the call today was talk about what we're doing as coaching uh, our agents and business owners and how they're planning their 2023 and beyond. Uh, yeah. so there's a brief introduction and I'll go forward when you tell me to do more. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Well, guys, um, we have some questions uh, that we're going to be asking. I'm going to be asking uh, both Brooke and Michael um, some different questions all surrounding goal setting. And, um, and so, you know, so that we can basically make it through each of them have five questions a piece and everything, any, anything that comes to mind, just put it in the chat and we're going to go back. We're going to, once we go through all of our questions so that you guys get the full flavor of what the topic's all about today, then, uh, we'll go back through the chat at the end, answer any questions and be able to really have a great follow-up because, you know, I do have some other things that I'd like to cover with you right at the end as well. So just so that everybody knows how this is going to flow. Um, so, hey, Brooke, ladies first, I'm going to ask you first. Um, so what is the single thing that, if done well, would make the biggest impact on your business? And I encourage everybody to answer the questions as I go through them in the chat. So go ahead, Brooke. Yeah, it's great to hear from everybody. So, yes, please put your information in the chat, too, or your answer to that. So I'm big on diving into relationships and people that already know, like, and trust you. So use the first app, use your database, your CRM, just love on the people you know, or get to know more people if, if you need to and love on them. And I'm big. I always tell my team come from a servant's heart and mindset. So be willing to serve regardless of any opportunity that will come your way from the business side or from that relationship. And, you know, I always say people can smell commission breath from a mile away. So show, <laughs> you know, love on them, deepen those relationships. Perfect. That Perfect. is awesome. That is fantastic. Um, Mr. Michael, let's see here. How do you go about setting goals and why is it important to set a goal? Yeah, great. Sure. I think you, you started off earlier talking about it's hard to believe, you know, Christmas and is there everyone got their Christmas shopping ready. But if we, we stop and think about it's the end of the year and how quickly this year has gone by. And if you blink, it will be summer of next year. OK, mm -hmm. that's just how quick yes. time flies. And I heard this growing up and getting older, the older we get, the quicker it goes. Mm -hmm. So. I think, if, you know, I've heard this years ago, and I believe that if, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. Right. And this is not a dress rehearsal. This is your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you should be the star of your own life. And whatever that star looks like for you, and it could be different. Somebody on, on the call today could be happy with $3 million in production. And that's their right. goal. And, and that is awesome. While yeah. someone else may say, I want to do $30 million in production. And that's okay. That's your goal. That's what it's all about. But we have really found this past year, guys, that um, it's not just about the numbers. People have been as interested in maybe with what's going on with our country, going on around the world, more of the whole life approach to planning. And so I've kind of broken it down into four categories for the clients that I coach. And, and uh, first one is spiritual. OK, what are your spiritual goals for 2023? 
And that could be simply, I want to read the Bible. I want to spend more time at church. I want to go through a Bible study with my child. I want to, whatever the case may be, what are your spiritual goals? That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two we have is what are your physical goals for 2023? I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle. I want to work out three days a week. I want to run a marathon. I want to climb, you know, Mount Everest. Whatever those may be, what are your physical goals? And then I have three is what are your family goals for 2023? And that could be, you know what, I'm going to host at my farm four gatherings for our family, extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles. I will pay for that. I'll do that. I won't take my family to Disney World. I won't take my family on a cruise. Whatever that case may be, that's three family. And then last but not least is what are your business goals for 2023? And what does that look like for you? And we can dig as deep into that as you want to, Sherry, but it could be you know, some may just want to track, I want this number of production, or I want this number of transactions. I want this amount of income. Uh, I want an additional uh, rental property. for. I mean, there's so many different ways to set goals in what we do in real estate. Uh, you know, we'll go as deep in that as you want to, but that's kind of the four categories, whole life that we're coaching on um, right now. That is so super, super important. And I'm I'm really, really proud and impressed that you guys start with with spiritual first because that that's that's wonderful. That's awesome. Um, all right, Miss Brooke, you're up again. Let's see here. How do you hold yourself accountable? Oh boy, this is like etched in my DNA. But like Tiffany said in the chat, you know, plan your time every day. So I'm big on setting my schedule. And most of you that do know me know that I'm a big uh, family person. So I plan my family time first. If I need to be at one of my kids soccer games or pick them up from school or anything like that, that's going to come first and foremost. And then I plan for prospecting. Um, I always, you know, if I'm talking about setting a schedule and a client wants to see something, I'll say, well, I have an appointment at that time. And it may be an appointment with myself at the gym. Um, I'm not going to, you know, lose a, lose a client over it, but if I can try to stick to my ideal schedule and plan for my day, I found that that's, that's best for me. Um, I, I lead by example for my team or I don't believe I'm acting in the best interest of my team as that role of being a good leader. I want to, want to set the example of doing that and having that work-life balance. So personally and professionally, um, and we talk openly about our business and personal goals as a team and often have encouragement partners within the team. So I don't call them accountability partners because no one really likes to be held accountable, but they love to be encouraged. So I always use the word encourage. Um, And we just, you know, push each other in, in those different ways. And I think, uh, you know, having that being a little uncomfortable is not a bad thing sometimes. So. Exactly. Exactly. Sounds great. Um, Let's see here, Michael. Um, How do you hold uh, yourself accountable, Michael? Yeah, so, you know, I, I believe if we don't write down our goals uh, and, and look at those um, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, that's the number one thing that I do is that I have what I want to accomplish written down and I, I reflect on those um, and, and I share those goals. You know, it's, it's kind of my wife and I being a married couple team, obviously right. have, I have a, a partner that not only we go to work together, but she lives with me. <laughs> and uh, so we hold each other very accountable because that's how we take care of our family. Right. Um, and then I, I've had a coach for the last five years, a coach and mentor that I speak with uh, once a week. And uh, we have meetings uh, ongoing that that helps hold me accountable and, and move in the right direction. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I am. Uh, me personally, I'm very much a, uh, a visual person. And so like, and I know, you know, and all you little millennials that are on this call, I don't know who, you know, I can't see everybody's faces right now, but I'm a visual person. So like, I have to have a planner. I have to like, see what, what's going on in my world, see my week. And, you know, and of course, you know, I've already like got started for, um, 2023, and basically January, I've already met my 
somewhat goal for, you know, for a monthly goal, you know, because right. I've already got it in my mind where I believe I can hit. Um, and all because this year for me has definitely been my, I believe my unicorn year. Okay. This, this was a year that all the stars and moons and clouds and whatever aligned and boom, here we go. You know, um, because I am in the investor world, you know, um, so, you know, my world is a lot different than everybody else's world. Um, and it's only investors, you know, it's only investors. Um, I do do personal business from past clients or whatever. Of course, when they call me, I, I, you know, drop and roll and run and help them um, to keep their business as well. But, you know, I'm a very visual person. And, and so these are the things that I do to, to make sure I stay on track, you know, and not only from a transaction standpoint, but that I, you know, pencil time in, family time in, that sort of, you know, and that everything kind of works together into, into our little, you know, mine and my husband's little puzzle here. So, okay, Miss Brooke, next question. What do you think most Asia, agents should do that they don't do? Oh boy, I always say that, you know, we have to treat this job as a real job. So that doesn't mean maybe sitting in front of the TV when you don't have an appointment. I'm, I'm big on, you know, at least the eight to five, I get up early in the morning and, um, you know, get ready to, to tackle or start the day. So I think it's working on education and training and prospecting activities and those sorts of things. Even when you don't have an appointment with a buyer and seller for the day, you know, dress for success. I always say that. Um, set little goals each week. So, for example, I want to just have one buyer appointment this week or one listing appointment or work out three times or get my CRM up to speed. I mean, all those different things personally and professionally. Um, I always say don't be a secret agent. Don't be an annoying agent either. Um but, you know, let fr friends, family members, et cetera, know that you're in the business, you're professional, you're someone they want to work with. I think too many of us are, are secret agents because we don't want to offend someone or ask for the business. Right, right. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Mr. Michael, whether you have goals or not, what is the number one thing you, sh you do that makes you successful? Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. I think th this really transformed our business um, three years ago, and that is, and you may, some people, no offense to anyone on, on the call or that is buying leads online, but if you are or have been, you may have seen uh, that opportunity reduce over the past few years or the response reduce or uh, they haven't been as fruitful leads. But what we have found, guys, the most successful leads we have are, I think Brooke just spoke to this, it's the people we know. They know you, they like you, they trust you. You know, real estate is different in that uh, it's a major decision. This is where people are going to lay their head at night and raise their family. Uh, and the biggest investment that most Americans make is in that real estate purchase or in their, their own home. Mm -hmm. So your, your database. You know, I know that word is overused in so many different businesses, but it is names, phone numbers, email address, and physical addresses. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that today on everybody that you know or everybody you've done business with, start. Um, yes. There's a couple of companies out there that do a great job uh, getting that information. They can take your Facebook page. They can take your LinkedIn, your email, your phone and bounce them against each other, find the phone number, all the information I just said, uh, and have uh, people for you to talk to about real estate, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the biggest thing that people in our industry need to do more of is work on that database and talking to people about what they do. To Brooke's point, and I love that, do not be a secret agent, okay? Right. Because the secret will be you won't have a check to cash. Okay, that <laughs> yeah. will be secret. Don't be a yes. secret agent. Let people yeah. know. What you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> that is here, true. Here's a good thing for newer agents sometimes, and even those mm -hmm. if we get in a in a um, in a in a in a bad spot and are slow in business. Here's a challenge for you: at the end of each day, write down whether it be in a notebook, 
or a pad by your bed or a piece of paper on the desk. How many people did I speak to today about real estate? Right. That could be a question as far as, hey, Sherry, has the market? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. hey, Sherry, how's the interest rates? Right. Uh, hey, what's going on with uh, in that? Whatever the case may be, did you speak to anybody today about real estate? And right. I think if you start writing that down and saying that you have and you actually have, you're going to see a turn in your business uh, mm -hmm. pretty quickly if you just get the word out there and don't be a secret agent. That is awesome. That is great advice. Very, very good advice. You know, I mean, I think every one of us could take take that to the very next level and, you know, and set goals just to have a general conversation, you know, with people um, that that's that's really cool. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, all right, Miss Brooke, how do you cultivate a team culture and why is that important for recruiting and retention? And you have two teams. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So that's um, so it's even more important because I think you want to be, you know, people want to be a, a part of something. Right. And and I think that's important. So, I mean, we have a very specific set of core values that we've set. We set years ago as a team. And, you know, I like to say we eat, sleep and and live by those each and every day. One of those is work hard, play hard. So I truly believe, you know, as a team, we all need to lift each other up, make each other look good. Um, and when we're working, have fun. You know, if, if we're on vacation, we need to be on vacation and we need to support and, and lean on one another, you know, at those times. But I think, you know, we always use the wisdom of the crowd. I mean, it's, it's big to be a part of a culture where people are willing to share and, and lift each other up. And, and we all want each other to be a success, whatever level of success that is for, for each of us. Right. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I mean, how do you, um, like, how, how are you like leading your team out of state? You know, cause I know a lot of people have different connections in different states. We do a lot on Zoom. Zoom mm -hmm. is, I mean, COVID taught us that that is absolutely possible and acceptable. Right. And so, I mean, we do, we start off each day on a Zoom meeting so we can see each other. We can see the whites of each other's eyes. So I, you know, I know, like if I know Michael and I see he doesn't look as happy as Michael does every day, you know, I can, I can chat with him offline and say, Hey, is everything Okay. And, and just connect on a, on a deeper level. So I think being a part, I mean, that's, that's a part of culture, but a part of serving one another and caring right. about one another as well exactly. and, and about your best interest, not just what numbers you're putting up. And I think to answer the second part of your question, when you talk about recruiting and retention, I mean, that's a huge part of it that people, you know, want to know you care and that we can just be there and support one another. And, and we've got a huge, I mean, our team is great about recruiting um, kind of within or working on, you know, Hey, I met with this agent or I just did a great transaction with this agent. And I think that nice. they might be someone that you want to talk to further. So we really protect our team and that culture. So I don't, I mean, it's, I like to say we're very picky. We just don't add anyone that wants to sell real estate to our team because that culture, you know, we're so protective of that. Right. We want to make sure yeah, anyone that, that comes in is going to affect the team culture and sometimes yes. in a positive way could be a negative way, but right. it's just important to, to set the stage for success on, on each side of that. Exactly. Exactly. You know, thinking about teams and thinking about, um, other companies. And, you know, of course, you know, this is time of year when we all get bombarded with, with phone calls and all that kind of stuff about, Hey, you know, come to Keller Williams, come to Alan Tate, come to, you know, EXP, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, and I wonder in the back of my mind, you know, cause listen, I'm the type of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it 110%. Okay. So when I started my real estate journey, I said, well, you know, if I'm going to go into real estate, I'm going to go work for the best company. 
And, you know, because, and Remax was the number one thing that came into my mind was Remax. And, and believe it or not, true story, true story. I'm on Pleasant Road, about to hit the interstate, heading to Columbia to go see my Cato stores. And I'm in the turn lane. And sure enough, the guy behind me, you know, he sees, I guess, probably out of the corner of his eye, a car moving on this side, you know, the straight lane. So then he just takes off and boom, he hits the back of me because we were in the turn lane and, you know, and it was the blinking arrow, not the go arrow, you know, so everybody's like sitting there. So he, he rear ends me and I'll luckily we're stopped. So not a whole lot of damage, but as it, as it happens, um, his wife was Shelly Simmons, um, Abbott. And Shelly Simmons back then was a big MAGA team. She had Carolina MAGA team. And, um, and so he and I, you know, of course, had exchange information and this, that, and the other, his insurance card, my insurance card, blah, blah, blah. And so I find out, you know, from him that his wife is, is uh, Shelly Simmons Abin at Remax Executive. And I was like, holy moly, you know, here is where I need to go, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just ranked into me, you know, I mean, okay, God got it, <laughs> you know, okay, got it, I'm going to go talk to Shelly, okay, perfect, you know, and sure enough, you know, th that's how things happen, guys, it's, it's just so crazy, but my question to all of you guys, and please be honest, and please put it in the chat, ain't nobody going to get in trouble about anything, I mean, we're all business people here, but I'm wondering, why do y'all think everybody else in the world is not at Remax. Why do y'all think agents stay at EXP or, or KW or Alan Tate or whoever, Sotheby's, you know, who, whoever? Why do y'all think other agents stay where they are instead of coming to Remax and being their own business? I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. You know, I really try and um, talk to a lot of people throughout the years that I enjoy working with. And I'm like, you know, you should come to Remax. You're, you're the type of person that would do well with us, you know, because, you know, I mean, and I treat it like it's a private club, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's exclusive, you know, and especially at executive, we are very looked up to agents, you know, when somebody sees a Remax executive or a Remax executive behind your name, they already expect, you know, us to be, of course, like Remax says, above the crowd. And we are, you know, and we work very hard to be that person, you know. And so there again, my thought goes, well, why doesn't everybody want to be that person? I don't know. So I would love to see what your what your comments are, because, you yeah, know. Here, here, can I jump on that for a second? Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. So let me go, well, real quickly, I'll say this. What you focus on expands. What mm -hmm. you focus on expands. Other companies that you mentioned, they focus and engage their agents on helping bring people into the organization. Right. So you don't have just the Tiffany, uh, the broker at uh, a particular branch doing all the recruiting you've got an entire office or army of people doing the recruiting. Mm -hmm. If and when Remax does that, the sky is the limit. And it's gonna be full of red, white, and blue balloons because the story is so much better to tell because have you ever had somebody say, who's Remax? What's yeah. Remax? Mm -hmm. It's one of the most recognized brands in the world still today that I feel we that's inside the Remax family take for granted. So here's the challenge. Reach out to a co-broke agent that you've done business with in 2022 and said, I would love for you to come meet me at my office. You've got to meet my Tiffany. She mm -hmm. loves on her people. She trains us like never before. And I'm part of the biggest Remax in the Southeast now, my office only has 12 people because we're still getting some of the best people in the marketplace. But as a company, we have over 450 agents and 19 offices. Well, what's mm -hmm. that mean to me? That's what I want to talk to you about. 
-hmm. So there's a lot of different scripts I think we all can work on and help Tiffany uh, and the, the other brokers throughout the REMAX executives family that we have to be active and care that our office grows the right way and bring the right people in and just make the introduction. You don't have to be a recruiter. That's right. not your job. You just have to love where you are and introduce them. Okay. And let me go back to, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm long winded sure. here for a second. I'm going to say yeah, something fine. about Brooks' conversation about teams. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we hear teams, if we're not on a team, that can be intimidating. Well, I don't like, you know, I don't want to hear about teams because I'm out here doing it myself, but you're not. You are part of a team, which that's your office. And mm -hmm. so my challenge to everyone else, the second challenge is get inside of your office and go talk to your broker about setting up weekly, monthly, ongoing meetings, support, brainstorming sessions with the other people in your office that you can build that network of people that you don't necessarily have to be on the team, but you are on the REMAX executives team. So if you need help exactly. with an open house, there's somebody there. You need mm -hmm. help with going out of town for vacation, there's somebody there. You need help showing you a house because you are sick and in bed. There's somebody there, but we just don't take advantage of that because we get on these islands and feel like we're all alone. You are not alone. Get involved in your office and raise your hand and say, I want to help and I want help and watch what happens to your business. Perfect. That's awesome, Michael. That is so awesome. Absolutely. And, um, and you are the next question. So what do you think most agents should do, but they don't do? Yeah. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, um, and I'm taking up all the time, Brooke, and you're smiling, being so nice about it. <laughs> uh, it is database, 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 database. Mm -hmm. That you have got to get down. I, I don't care if it's on a notebook piece of paper, that's your database. Right. Who right. you can reach out to and talk to. And guys, I'm going to tell you, here's to change your business life. Go find three business owners that you can refer business to and they can refer to you. And I love this terminology. And if you don't mind, I'll share this real quick, Sherry. Sure, go right ahead. I share, I'm going to share, let's pretend you're the you're a divorce attorney, okay? Okay. I okay. have called to set up in a meeting with Sherry Burris, the divorce attorney in Greenville, South Carolina. Because guess what, guys? One of the biggest things when a, a couple has to go through a divorce, God forbid you ever have, I have years ago, it's horrendous. One of the first things that has to happen is what's going to happen with that investment that real estate, right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to meet Sherry, one of the top divorce attorneys, to say, Sherry, I've heard great things about you and your practice. I know you take care of people when it comes to you. Not that we want to promote divorce, but regretfully, 51% of the marriages in America end in divorce. Right. What would it take for me to be your champion in real estate when John and Jane Doe have hit that mark and they have to sell that property? What would it take for me to be your champion? Well, what do you mean yeah. by champion? Well, what that means, Sherry, is I and my wife have been through a divorce and we care about people. And I want to be able to minister them, to speak to them, to talk to them, to show them grace and to help them get the very top dollar they can get for that property if that's where they are. OK, mm -hmm. and we will serve them well. And in reverse, Sherry, I need somebody to be my champion divorce attorney, God forbid, if I come across somebody in my network of people that need to talk to someone, I'd love to feel comfortable to send you that business. How mm -hmm. can we work together and be each other's champions? Yeah. Got to tell you, if you have that conversation, not many people's doing that with different business owners, there's a divorce attorney. There's a variety of different people, carpet cleaners. Guess what? People are going to clean the carpet before they sell a house. Painters, mm -hmm. they're going to paint, mm -hmm. landscapers. There's a variety of different ancillary businesses that we touch every day that you could reach out to to become the person, their go-to person when it comes to selling or helping someone buy real estate. Have you done that in 2022? Right. Are you going to do that in 2023? I challenge you to see if that don't make a difference in your business. Go find three. Go find five. If you want to be aggressive, go find 10 and watch what happens. 
Yeah, no, that's an awesome suggestion. You know, I've never thought about calling it a divorce attorney, <laughs> but that's a, not that we're promoting. But divorce, you know what? No, happening. no, no. I get it. I get it. No, that is that's very smart. That is very smart. And you know, we always, you know, we kind of all think about our our sphere as our friends, our family, our this, our that. We really. You know, I don't think we we put as much value on just the general people that we're around all the time, like the painters, like the contractors, like the our insurance agent or like our, you know, whatever doctor, you know, for goodness sakes. Mortgage brokers. Um, mortgage yeah, mortgage brokers. Yeah. Them. Now. Now. Yeah, that's that's for sure. You know, you your very first friend should be your mortgage broker. You know, that's that's your very best friend right there. And um, so it's got to be a win win. I'm just not going to send you my business. I expect right. something in return. One yeah. great service for my clients, yes. But I know you get a call from John and Jane Doe applying for a half million dollar house and they don't have yeah. a real estate agent. Who are you sending that to? Yeah, exactly. I need to get at least one of them in a the year or I got to go find the lender that will send me some. God bless. No, no hard feelings, but this is a back scratching business and I need my back scratch just like you do. Yeah, exactly. Well, true story. I mean, our my Uber uh, driver called me uh, two days ago. <laughs> it said, Sherry, I'm ready to buy a house. I mean, you know, this is a man that we always call when we have to take trips, you know, because we trust his driving. We like his driving. So we have a personal relationship with him, you know, and he's been driving us for four and a half years now. So, of course, when he's ready to buy a house, who does he call me? Because he knows me and he trusts me. You know, so that does work. That that is very, very true to what you're talking about. OK, guys, we're down to our last two questions here. So, Miss Brooke, how do you put team members in a position to be successful? Well, I'd say um, don't be afraid to, you know, have them leave you. <laughs> I will think I mean, I think many team leaders operate from a scarcity mindset, but I believe it, we all cross each other's paths for a reason. And right. it's our job to get out the most of every moment we have together with that person each and every day. So although we're a team leader and you know, I'm the one that raised my hand and said, okay, I want to be a team leader. We're all leaders. Right. We all can lead. And so I think it's important. I, you know, we allow our team members to be leaders too. I'm big on operating out of co-creation. So I don't have the biggest or brightest ideas just because I stepped up to start a team. It's, I mean, and, and my team will probably laugh at that and say, yeah, she doesn't have the biggest and brightest ideas sometimes, but I'll say, you know, we all share together and give right. to the team and our team members, I have them run some of the meetings, they have different days that they run our huddles. We've been doing them for seven years. Um, you know, I, I trust any of them to run a weekly team meeting. If I'm, if I'm away, I mean, that's kind of, we're all, we're all leaders and yes. in our own right. So. Absolutely. No, that's perfect, Brooke. All right, Mr. Michael. Um, do you have a daily or weekly ritual that you do? Yes. <clears throat> Great question. So my daily ritual is is very simple. Is when I uh, first wake up, the first thing I do is uh, is my prayer life and spend time uh, giving thanks. I started mm -hmm. that about two years ago, thanking God for everything that I have: my health, my home, my family, my friends, my business. Uh, thanks and thanksgiving. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's so uh, it's been so neat to see. The more I give thanks, the less my needs are for asking for stuff because mm -hmm. we have so much we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Then I do a uh, journal. I'm writing down uh, whether it's from that Bible study I'm doing that morning or a verse that I may have read. I'm journaling something I, I personally took from that. Um, and then it's time to, to get my physicality going. So there's a workout that I have to do. Um, I used to be more of a beast about it until I had back surgery a few years ago. I was in the CrossFit, but that, uh, as I'm now 55, that, uh, my back cannot hold up to that. <laughs> so I had to quit that. I uh, feel your pain. Yes. But, but working out here, here's guys, the, you know, if you've flown recently, the stewardess inevitably will say before you take off that if the cabin loses pressure, the oxygen mask will drop from above, put your mask on first. 
before you try to help someone else. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Because if we aren't healthy, if we aren't breathing, if right. we aren't able to physically get around and do the things we need to do, who can we help? No in our families, mm -hmm. in our business, trying to get in and out of a house. I know this is so sounds so simplistic, guys, but how many of us deny ourselves that opportunity to be better physically? So I would challenge you. You don't have to be a workout king and, and lift a million weights, but you can walk a mile every day. You can go up and down step, whatever that may be, but physicality. So that's two that I mm -hmm. do. And then the uh, third is I get in to start our business. I have a home office I'm sitting in right now. That's why I work out of predominantly in the mornings. I do my coaching sessions there in the morning time uh, each day. Uh, but I have a to-do list every day. That, that's how I end my day. When I journal, how many people did I talk to about real estate today? What did I get accomplished today? And then from that, it makes my to-do list for the next day. Right. So by 8 p.m., I shut my phone off from business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I educate my clients. You will not reach me after 8 p.m. unless it's an emergency. And that right. emergency is the house is on fire. Other than that, right. I'm not talking to you. I love you, but I got to have time with my family. Yeah. And then I pick it back up the next morning. So mm -hmm. I used to not sleep at night. I used to be stressed at night because I was not decompressing for that day. So if you're not doing that, guys, write down where you're ending up and then make your to-do list for the next day and leave it be. Nobody's yeah. going to die on the operating table if you don't call them back about that three-bedroom, two-bath on Smith Street tonight. Right. Okay? Call them in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. Yeah, that is perfect. I'll tell you. Um, you know, and it's it's so true. I mean, I, I do that same thing. It's, it's like I, I have to cut things off at, at 8 o'clock every night as well because if not, I could work 24-7. That's you right. know, I could just like a rat on a wheel, right. <laughs> you know, just but, keep yeah, on, think, keep I, it on. I think the key to that is, and then I don't pick it up till 9 a.m., my phone. I think the key is you've got to train your customers and clients and uh -huh. family and uh -huh. co-business people. That's how you do business. Yes. Okay? So nobody's expecting you and they're not driving you crazy with 20,000 texts. They know, well, Michael's not going to answer me till 9 a.m. I can wait till the morning. It uh -huh. takes a minute. And there's some fear involved, but I'll tell you, if you want a life and in this business, I challenge you to do that and see what happens. People, people wait on if you ask them to. Yes. Yes. Can I, do. can I give a couple of suggestions in regards sure. to that, that have worked sure. great. So um, thank you. Just real fast, a couple of things. So the, those that have iPhones and, you know, Android has a little version too, but the focus or the do not disturb while you're driving. So maybe use that. There's an auto reply on the driving. So instead of using it for driving, change the auto reply that says, hello, I'm in a meeting right now, but I will get back to you right away in the morning, or I will get back to you within the next 24 hours. Or I mean, 24 hours is probably too much, but you can edit that. And then when you're going into your prospecting time and your power hour, you're doing this or that, just put it on the do not disturb and they're going, I mean, silence is, is deadly in this business, I feel. And so if they just get a response from you that says, okay, she got my text. She's going to get back with me. Yeah. That's fine. And you can do the same thing on email and set that auto response. And there are different times you can do, but that really, I mean, it allows you, I think, to remove the anxiety of not responding and, and teaches them to know that you got it, you'll respond. And then make sure that you do respond and you catch up from those. Exactly, exactly. No, that is that is very, very true, very, very true. So guys, in the in, in rounding out the, the discussion today, and you know, you guys have got some great answers to these great questions and has definitely given uh, all, I think all of us a lot to think about and a lot to work with going forward for 2023 and just, you know, taking five of the things that you've heard today on this call and just put it into your life, you know, make it happen and, um, and, and see what, see what success can bring to you. You know, I, it was funny. I, um, when I was trying to get prepared for some of this today and everything, I looked it up, you know, the Google definition of success. It is the state or condition of meeting a defined range of expectations. 
Okay. Depending on what that expectation is. And, you know, and everybody has a different definition of success. As we talked about um, when we got started, um, you know, success can be your achievement, your triumph, your win, your, uh, you know, attainment, your glory, your execution, your accomplishment, your victory, um, your progress, you know, um, you know, just taking one step forward that's success, you know, changing one habit every day to something that is productive, that's success, you know, um, they say, hey, it takes 21 days to, to break a habit or make a habit, you know, give it that three weeks so that by the first week of January, you're on track to be that, that most productive agent possible, you know, um, I want to talk about a little bit about, um, you know, how, like the best way to be successful is to manage, you know, quite frankly, manage your time. You know, um, time is one thing that you really, really, you can't buy more of. Okay. It's not for sale. <laughs> You've got to learn how to monopolize your own time. And, you know, so a lot of people, that know I work with investors and everything. I do a tremendous amount of transactions. Like this year, um, believe it or not, I was looking at my book this morning and I think I'm going to miss 200 by one. I think I'm going to end the year by at 199 <laughs> at 199 transactions. Okay. So me, myself, just me. And so you think, okay, how can this person do 200 transactions? Well, it's not just me. I do have an army behind me, okay? But one thing that I will tell you that saves time, and I will challenge all of you guys to do this on your own, whether it's personal and in your personal time as well as your business time, is to try and never touch anything twice. So in other words, when you pick up a project, finish it before you move to the next project, you know, and that is one thing that um, when people come in and come in under me, um, you know, as far as, you know, I asked you guys one of the questions, um, how do you put your, um, your team members in a position to be successful? Well, what I do is, is I make them come in and work for me. I make them come in and be my admin for you know, sometimes it's three months, sometimes it's six months. Um, and I pay them myself a, an hourly salary. I don't expect them to work for me for free, but, uh, but they come in and they work for me and I want them to be comfortable. I want them to, to be able to, to read a contract, write a contract, write a repair request, read a repair request, like they're blinking and breathing. They don't even have to think about it. They understand what it's talking about. They get it because, you know, we all know the one thing that uh, real estate school does not teach anybody is how to sell the damn house and how to write a contract. I mean, you can't, you know, you know, it just, they just don't, they can't teach you real life, you know? And so I like to teach real life um, for at least three to six months with all of the people that are in my little team. And, and yeah, they work for Sherry until Sherry feels good that they could graduate and be in the world, you know, and be successful on their own, you know? So, um, I have them crawl a little bit before they, before they just take off out of there. But, um, another thing that I thought that is very, um, important for everybody to know, you know, um, is the fact that you need to know what your time is worth. In other words, what do you make an hour? Have you, have you guys ever figured it out? Have you guys ever thought about that? You know, because, you know, some clients will drain us half crazy. You know what I mean? And, and then by the end of the transaction, you're like, Lord, I'm not making nothing because this woman has wore me out. I mean, you know, or this man has wore me out or whatever. And so, you know, I eventually, you know, I kind of came up with that whole concept about, you know, I can't let these people stress me out if they're not worth my time, you know? So what is my time worth? And of course, basically all it is is a math equation, you guys, okay? All it is is a math equation. And um, 
And so what I did um, is I looked at our company's um, year end last year. Okay. So if you do the math and you think about it, and we'll, we can send out instructions exactly what, what needs to be done if everybody's not great, great, great with math. Um, but the average agent um, in volume sold 6036000 let's just say. They did 16 transactions, and the average agent um, earnings were 156254 okay? Um, the average unit sold last year in, at Remax was 377,256. And the average commission on each transaction was somewhere around 2.6 on an average. You just basically do math and this all comes together. So what did our average agent last year earn an hour? So let's say every agent takes at least two weeks vacation. And they just go for the 40 hour, you know, 40 hour a week. And um, so basically at 2000 hours, that agent, the average agent at Remax made $78 an hour, $78 an hour. So, I mean, if you're not making $78 an hour, it's not worth it, you know? And so you've got you've to always kind of keep that in the back of your mind is like, and then you can also make your own personal goal. You know, well, what do I want to make an hour? What do I feel my time is worth? You know, and um, and you know, I mean, my time in my eyes, my time's worth at least two hundred fifty dollars an hour. You know, so if I'm not making that, then I'm I'm hurting myself, not helping myself. You know, not helping my business, and. And so then I need to either work on higher, you know, homes to sell, higher priced homes to sell, or I need to work with more buyers, you know, to increase that dollar per hour, because in general, you usually make a lot more money on buyers than you do listings. You know, a lot of times we'll, you know, to get a listing, we will give them a little break on that listing side of commission. You know, it's just normal and it's the, it's the way Things have to be done sometimes, especially to beat other agents out and to win listings, you know, to get your name out there. So you always have to think about um, how you can do that and in which ways you can go about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, you all need to know exactly like how your individual business breaks out. How what percentage of your business is done in listings and what percentage is done in buyers? And where did you end up, you know, making more money on which side of that transaction? Mm -hmm. And where do you think you can, can make even more money per hour? And I'm not talking about working harder. I'm just talking about working smarter and making sure that you're putting your time where your time makes you the money like you want. So, you know, when I look, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm no, sorry. no, no. Go ahead. So, um, I, this is not against what you're saying. I agree, but I want to put an and on it. Okay. Yes. And I would say for us all to remember that this is different from another sales than anything we can do. Yeah. But I say I say this to people all the time. If I do my do my job right, I've never sold a house. Right. Meaning, if I've interviewed you the right way in our buyer's consultation then you've I've helped you become self-aware of the house that's right for you to call home. Mm -hmm. And this year I look at it a little different in that I, you know whether you're spending a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million dollars, I'm gonna treat you the same. Right. Because I want to be your realtor for life. Mm -hmm. Because your sister, aunt, uncle, brother, pastor, somebody you work with may also need our services. And although I may have taken a hit on you financially, the business you're going to bring me down the road was worth every headache that Jane Doe put me through. Right. And Sherry, I think to remember too, this is one of the most stressful, top five most stressful things somebody can go through. And it <laughs> is buying a house. And it's usually coupled by another stressful thing, a marriage, a divorce, the birth of a child, a death. Mm -hmm. Something's going on in life that they're making a move. So I would yeah. say if we can be 
the calm in the storm and show yes. empathy. And for me, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I've, I've been, I'm open about yes. that. I pray with people. I talk to them. We become their counselors through this process. And so mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not going, I hear what you're saying. I, I coach yeah. people on this. Yes. We've got to want, know our numbers. Yes. For sure. But I'd say that's, don't forget the people behind the numbers. And that's what will separate you from anybody else is they're going to love doing business with Brooke, with Tiffany, with Anna, with Michael, because those people loved on me, not just wanted a commission check. Absolutely. No, no, no. I agree. I agree. One hundred and ten percent. And yes. And it is not about, you know, it's not always about the dollars. But what I what I do want to try and say is, is that, you know, sometimes people spend way too much time on something that's not worth their time. Yes. You know, so you got to be smart about making those decisions, you know, when you need to cut ties. That's all, because I know sometimes some people will hang on to something so hard and then they it just causes you way too much misery, you know. So um, but I am all about, you know, yes, you you serve the hundred thousand as well as you do the million dollar clients. You, You know, everybody's the same in my book, you know, and, you know, and I never outdress anybody you know i am who i am you know um just a good old girl from southwest georgia you know in my heart and um and that's that's where it is but you know to also be a well-rounded business person you want to make sure that you're you're treating your time care with care yeah that's what i guess we should say treat your time with care Uh you know Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and so at the end of the year, there are um, places that you can go on Matrix. If nobody knows, you can go under agent market reports and go under agent production. And you can always learn where you're you're at year to date. And it automatically breaks down your your listing and your sales, your buyer sales. Um, And then you can also go on um, Max Center under the awards and that will also tell you year to date where you are and then of course everyone gets our you know loves to see our little paycheck stubs come across the email (laughs) and that will tell you at the very bottom where your year to date totals are where your earnings are so um so you can do your own math yourself and um and be able to figure out where you want to be for 2023 so you know my challenge for me in my office, because I am the broker in charge for Fort Mill, and um, and I know going into 2023, um, I've got to make up for probably what Sherry's not going to do next year, <laughs> because this year was a unicorn, okay? I, I'm not signing up for 200 transactions again this year. Thank y'all. <laughs> I mean, it was just, woo, talk about what to lose your mind, um, you know, so... I know I need to get at least $20 million more production in new agents to my office. So that's going to be my goal personal as far as for my office goes. And for me personally, uh, you know, I want to hit at least somewhere around that 30 million mark. So, um, so that I'm not uh, bringing the office down, I'm continuing to bring the office up. So anyway, guys, well, Listen, thank y'all, everyone, so much for joining us. I think it's about over with. Um, Tiffany, do you have any final um, thoughts that you would like to to bring to the table before we let everybody go? Thank you, Sherry, for hosting today. Thank you, Brooke, and thank you, Michael. The insight and the information that you shared, I think, is invaluable. And as we all go into goal planning and business planning for 2023, if there are any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us so that we can help you get 2023 off to a great start. Thank you guys so much. Thank y'all. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bye. Bye.